Redis is an open source in-memory data structure store which can be used as a database or a cache store or a message broker. In this video, we will see how to use Redis as a cache store for our Spring Boot app. We will be working on the Spring Boot project I had built in my video Spring Boot Caching where I had introduced the basic caching concepts and annotations used by Spring Boot. Please watch this video to understand the Spring Boot caching concepts. In this video, we will simply switch the caching provider as Redis. Here is the project we had built earlier where we explain the various caching annotations and the caching strategy where the annotations should be used. I have the Redis server running locally on my machine listening at port 6379. To understand how to install Redis server, please watch my video Installing Redis on Linux. Let's open our pom.xml file. We were using the basic caching earlier using the dependency Spring Boot Starter Cache, which quickly adds basic caching dependencies to our app. Spring Boot auto configures the cache manager, etc. In production, however, we should use providers like Redis, EH Cache, etc. In this video, we will switch the caching provider to Redis. And Spring Boot makes it simple. All you have to do is in the pom.xml file replace Spring Boot Starter Cache to Spring Boot Starter Data Redis. Next, in our application or properties file, let's indicate to Spring Boot that we are using Redis for cache. Let me paste these lines here. Using spring.cache.type, we indicate that we are using Redis as the cache provider. Host is localhost. Port it is listening to on is 6379. The remaining properties are optional. Using spring.cache dot redis dot cache hyphen null equal to false, we tell redis not to cache null values. We indicate the time to live or the time after which the cache values should expire, which is 10 minutes here or 600,000 milliseconds. The last entry of use dot key dot prefix, if set to true, would prepend the key name with the cache name. So if your cache name is my cache and our key name is my key, then it will store the key as my cache my key. A false value simply stores the key as my key without the cache name being prepended. To see all the possible cache related properties, let's google Spring Boot Cache Properties and we see the appendix on docs.spring.io website. Here you can see all the common application properties and here are the cache related properties. Some for specific providers like Redis or Couchbase and some general like cache names. So back to our project, the Redis dependency and the properties is essentially all we have to do to switch the caching to Redis. Spring Boot auto configures everything else and our existing annotations in our application will work just fine. Let's start our app. Here I have the browser and the Spring Tool Suite console stacked so we can see the messages in the console as we execute the URL. Let me clear the console. Let's execute localhost 8780 slash get all endpoint which returns all the objects here, the two person objects. We see the message in the console getting records. This is because our get all endpoint executes the method where we are putting the system dot out. Because of the cacheable annotation it is cached. Since there are no method parameters and we have not specified the key, the key will be simple key. If we hit the URL the next time, we do not see any message. So this time it is pulling it from the cache. Let me open the terminal window and run the redis command line interface. Using the keys asterisk command, we see the keys it has. And here is our simple key for the get all method. Let's now hit the URL to get a specific person here Ken. Based on the output, we see it is executing the method. If we hit the URL again, we see it did not execute the method again. It is getting it from the cache. Going to a Redis command line interface again, we see that now there are two keys, one created by calling our get all endpoint and the other for Ken. The cache name is not prepended. If we go to the application.properties file and change the prefix to true, then it will create the cache entry as persons colon Ken where person is our cache name. In this video, we saw how easy it is to switch to and use Redis for caching by essentially including a dependency in the pom.xml file and a few properties in the application.properties file. The existing annotations in the application work just fine. Spring Boot auto configures everything 
and the existing annotations in the application work just fine. To see the caching annotation and their explanation, please watch my other video, Spring Boot Caching. Thanks for watching.